Try not to take it personally. Try not to make it feel like everything that you did was for nothing because they're not even appreciating it. Welcome to Step Struggles. I'm your host, Brooke, and I'll be discussing common issues we face in blended families. All too often, step parents feel alone while navigating the tough times. My goal is to shine a light on these topics and perhaps provide a fresh perspective to those who are needing one. Let's discuss this week's struggle. Happy Friday! I wanted to give an update on what happened after I recorded my last episode because I know I had touched on the fact that my son was sick again. I was supposed to be going out of town and was getting really stressed out that I was going to be stuck at home because we have a sick kid. COVID's still a thing and can't really travel. Didn't want to get my friends sick. Anyway, my wish came true. My son, it was pretty much 24 hours and then he seemed completely fine. I kept him home from school the Monday and then he was full of energy and had, you know, nothing. His throat didn't hurt anymore. No fever. Everything seemed completely fine. So he, I gave him a test just to make sure he was negative. Everything, um, was fine. So he went back to school. I got on the plane. I went and saw my friend and it was really nice to just get the night to ourselves to be able to go out for dinner and just spend some time together and yeah, just kind of be the person that I was before kids. And so often we get so wrapped up in being a parent, being a step parent, focusing all our energy on our kids and the family and We don't get too many opportunities to just go out and be just us without that aspect. Obviously, we spent most of the time talking about the kids and, you know, not the whole time, but that is a big part of it because it is a big part of who we are. But it is just really nice to not have to worry about caring for anybody but myself for one night. So it was really fun. I'm really glad I got to see her and do that and have that experience and that another virus didn't come in the way of that. And yeah, I got back. I went to the doctor because I have been coughing on and off since I had COVID in February. And I don't know how many people have experienced this, but I had a puffer. It was kind of working, but didn't resolve the issue. Then my voice got funny. So I went to see a doctor. And anyway, apparently there's, you can develop some form of asthma after you have COVID. So I got a new puffer and it is really helping. So yeah, I'd be interested to see who else has been through that. Maybe I'll throw a poll up on Instagram and see if if anyone is with me on that. But anyway, I want to thank everybody who did respond to my post on Instagram asking for what you're struggling with. And our most popular struggle that came back on this one is the comparison between the two homes. And this is definitely something that is really common and that a lot of us kind of go through and experience. So I thought it would be a good one to touch on. And I just, I narrowed it down to the three most common struggles that we face when it comes to this topic, at least from people on my Instagram that are responding. So if you want to do that, then make sure you get on there. You give me a follow the struggling stepmom on Instagram and watch for the box of my stories. I do ask every week what you're struggling with and then that's how we get our topics. I'll start with with the first one and it's just kind of that we have different parenting styles and that we run our homes differently. So often when stepmom is struggling with this topic, it's because you have the structured home, you have the rules, you are trying to teach them how to function as adults, and the other home can tend to be a little looser, maybe kind of have that Disneyland parenting style, and you feel like you're not the fun house. That's at least one way that we struggle with that. So if that is the case, and you are feeling frustrated that your home is the only one that is kind of guiding the kids to be responsible adults, or at least that's how you feel, then my advice to you would be to just kind of focus on the fact that you are providing them that structure that is something that's really important for kids to have and to not worry about what's happening in their other home. Because again, we can't control that. That's not something that is on us. And that 
in the end, I know that it's so frustrating right now, but for the long term, the kids will be able to look back on their parents and their the guidance that they had and they will respect you for what you're doing and they'll be thankful that they got the lessons that they got and it will really help them. So again, just try not to feed into the comparison and if the kids are wanting to spend more time there because it's more fun or try, just try not to take it personally because you don't know what's really going on in their minds and Obviously, they're going to want to go to where they don't have rules and they get to have all this fun. But if you have a parenting order, if you have uh, something that is making them come to you, then just you'll just need to keep explaining to them that this is just how it is and that you're sorry that they're not happy, but that you are looking out for them and that you're doing it out of love and that one day they will understand that. And again, for them, it's going to be frustrating to hear, but you are doing what is right for the kids, what you feel is right for the kids, what's right for your family and your home. And that's, that's all you can focus on. That's all you can control. So try to remind yourself that in the long term, they are going to be thankful for what you're doing. And they're adults longer than their kids. So they will be, they'll be thankful for you. So try to give yourself a pat on the back and not worry too much about the fact that, you know, that's the way it is. And if you are the fun house and you feel that the other house is too strict and not letting the kids live and and that the kids aren't happy there, again, this is not something that we can control. So trying to focus on what's going wrong at the other house is not what you need to worry about, but focusing on how you can help the kids to see the the benefits of what's happening or even just to listen to them to be that safe safe place for them to come and if you do have a reasonable co-parent then maybe just sharing their what the kids are saying and if you don't then again just being that safe place for them to talk and maybe trying to give them a different perspective of why the other parent is so strict or so structured and that they are just doing what they feel is right for them and trying to be a support for the kids and helping them to feel better about about both places that they have to live because this is their life and they do need to go through it and all we can do is be there. So yeah, so that's kind of the the structured versus unstructured battle that a lot of us go through. Um, another another issue that we face when it comes to the comparison between the homes is the the loyalty binds or the guilt and that the kids are feeling like they can't have fun with you or that they need to go back and say negative things about your house or just that they feel that they have to act a certain way or talk a certain way about about your home. I I know that this one can be really upsetting and make you feel very discouraged if you are really trying to make it a good place for them. You're putting in a lot of time, effort, money to to make their time with you happy. And then you hear that they say something negative to their other parent about your house or that they focus on the one issue that happened or whatever. Again, this is not something that you can control. And if they are feeling a certain way about how they talk about your home to their other parent and if they're going back and, you know, let's say you've put in all this effort to make their their time with you special. You've spent money to go and do certain things. You've taken time to organize and plan and you've had all these really high expectations of how much they're going to love it. And then the kids go back and just say something, you know, that they had to go to bed at a certain time or that they had to clean up their room or whatever it may be that they put the focus on something that they didn't enjoy. Try not to take it personally. Try not to make it feel like everything that you did was for nothing because they're not even appreciating it. That may not be the case. They may be going back and saying certain things to their other parents because they feel guilty for having fun with you or they feel bad for their other parent that they're missing out on these things so they don't want to go back and talk about how wonderful it is because their other parent wasn't there. So it might be more of a loyalty bind situation where they're just feeling that 
that this is how they have to go back and talk. And that's not something that's fun for them. And that's not it's not an ideal situation. Sometimes having divorced parents is difficult for the kids to navigate. And this is just how they're trying to get through it. So try to remember that their conversation with their other parent is really none of your business. If the other parent is coming back to you and talking about it, try to give them the benefit of the doubt that they are just concerned for their child and that they are trying to help out. Or maybe they're not. Maybe they're just trying to, you know, cause chaos in your home or trying to make it seem like they have a better relationship with the kids than you do or whatever. Whatever the case is, you know your reality and just try to stay grounded in that. Try not to get wrapped up in the drama or trying to prove yourself to the other parent or trying to make the kids not speak that way because at the end of the day, the kids just need to feel like they can speak freely to their parents without having to worry that they are going to be told on to the other parent or that they're going to not be able to just navigate through this in the best way that they know how. So let them do what they need to do and let them feel like they are having a safe space with you because if they're going back and telling their mom something because they feel like that's what they have to tell her to make her feel okay and then she's coming back and telling you and then they're getting in trouble from you about that thing then now they can't go anywhere and say anything without feeling like they're letting somebody down or like they are not doing the right thing. So again, trying to give them the benefit of the doubt of why they're saying it and that this is something that they feel they need to do and let them have that conversation with their mom without it being something that now they have to come back and face with you because it just gets so stressful for them. They don't know what to say, who to talk to, who they can have a private conversation with and just live their life. So don't worry about what they're saying as long as they're not accusing things that aren't happening, as long as it's all legal and nothing, not a safety concern, of course, but if they're going and saying negative things about your house that aren't necessarily the full story just don't worry about it. Let them have that conversation with their mom and try not to take it personally because there's so many reasons that they might be doing that that have nothing to do with you and nothing to do with how they actually feel about their time with you. So try not to take it personally and just, yeah, just allow them the freedom to have conversations with each parent and not be scrutinized for every little thing that they're saying. Number three, this one is a big one. It's the perceived comparisons between homes because we have that insecurity or imposter syndrome and we're feeling like they're comparing us to their mom. And yeah, so we're just being hypersensitive to everything they say about what happens at their mom's house. Or if they say, you know, my mom doesn't do it like that, or my mom makes that better. Or even if they're not even actually comparing but just relating to you I know this is something I talk about a lot but it was something that was for me a difficult thing to get past is that if they were relating to me about something by telling me that they did this with their mom before then I'd you know get that kind of I wish this could just be ours kind of feeling but again that's it's nothing about you it's just them trying to share experiences and they've had a lot of experiences with their mom and there's you know, that's just how it is. So seeing it as a way for them to bond with you and to share experiences with you, and that's what they're actually trying to do rather than compare you. That was a big game changer for me just to kind of see it as a bonding moment rather than a comparison and trying to divide us and just getting to a place where you are more confident in your role and you're not feeling like you are trying to compete with her. Because So often these perceived comparisons come from a place of competition or like we are trying to fill a spot or a position and we focus so much on being the stepmom and being respected as the stepmom and fitting into that role and being received that way by the kids and our partner and all of those things and we lose sight of of what actually matters and that's getting to know the kids and getting to strengthen those bonds and relationships between the kids. Because when we come in, we don't know the kids. These are people that we do need to get to know and we need to work on our dynamic and see how it's going to be without the expectation of 
how it should look or or what we thought it was going to be like and that the kids are just going to see us as their step parent because we married their dad. I mean, yeah, you're their step parent, but that what does that mean? Does that mean that they love you? Not necessarily. Does that mean that you have a great relationship? Not necessarily. Does that mean that you need to parent them and that you are really responsible for the way their life goes or the way? No, not necessarily. It's whatever you want it to be and whatever work you put into creating that bond and that family dynamic. So try to take the pressure off of yourself to be the mom and start putting more effort into getting to know the kids and just being a family, you know, and in order to feel like a family, you need to know each other. You need to have, you know, stories and experiences and those tough conversations. So opening up and being a little more vulnerable to the kids instead of just getting defensive when they don't receive you as a parent or a member of the family is it can really go a long way to yeah, just be open to a a relationship and learning about each other and being more curious about who they are instead of putting so much focus on being the stepmom and whatever you feel that that is supposed to mean in your family or to you. Yeah, so those are the, the kind of top three that people were zeroing in on on Instagram. And I know that it can be so hard and it's just another layer to the blended family dynamic and worrying that the kids aren't as happy with you or that one day. I mean, for me, this is a huge one because again, we're long distance. We, the kids need to get on a plane to come here. They spend eight weeks with us in the summer and my stepdaughter is going to be 14 in September. And this has been kind of a time period I've been dreading because what if the day comes that she doesn't want to leave her friends for the summer? And I know when I was 15, 16, 17, if somebody told me that I had to leave my friends for eight weeks, (laughs) that's not happening. I would not have wanted to do that. And I would have put up a huge fight to not do that. So it's something that I've kind of been bracing myself for and trying to wrap my head around that that day might come. And that is not a reflection of me. That is not a reflection of our family dynamic. I mean, she really loves coming here and so far it has not been an issue, but I am preparing myself for how I'm going to respond if that does happen because, I mean, to a certain extent that needs to be her choice and I don't want to force her to come here if that's not what she wants. I mean, we try to create an environment that is something that she'll want to do. And I know that she really loves us. She loves her brothers. She she likes her time here. And so far it's working out fine, but I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to hold. And we are going to need to respect what she wants when she does start vocalizing that to a certain extent, because it is her life. And we need to see it that way instead of seeing her saying she doesn't want to come here as her saying she doesn't want to come here rather than her feeling that she wants to be living her life and putting her time and energy into her friendships and a summer job. And, you know, when I was a teenager, if I had the choice between spending a night with my parents or going out with my friends, I was going to go out with my friends every single time. And that has nothing to do with my parents and everything to do with the fact that I was a teenager who was very social and wanted to spend time with my friends. So again, we need to try and not take things so personally, see the bigger picture, figure out what is going to work and go from there. But letting the kids have their own motives instead of our perceived motives because of our insecurities it's really important and it will really go a long way with your relationship. And just for anybody listening, when I was a teenager, yes, loved my friends. Everything was about my friends and I still love my friends, but my parents are now my friends and I definitely talk to them more than I talk to most of my friends and our relationships are very good now. So if you are going through that time and your kids don't want to see you right now, don't worry. It's they'll grow out of it and they'll come back around. Just try to show them 
some respect for them wanting to run their own lives and that it really may not have anything to do with you. Yeah. So thanks again for listening me to me. Just talk to myself. I do really appreciate that you guys keep coming back and and listening. So I will be back next week to do it all again. And I will I will be having a guest. So um, next week is the last Friday of the month. And let me know on Instagram. Maybe I'll put up a poll on that if I should be having guests more or if rambling onto myself is sufficient for <laughs> three Fridays of the uh, month. So yeah, thanks. And I will be back to do this again next week. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Step Struggles. If you are wanting to discuss what you're struggling with, I do offer step family coaching at strugglingstepmom.com. I'm also always open to chat on Instagram at the struggling stepmom. If you'd like to weigh in on our struggle of the week, give me a follow and watch for the question box in my stories. Thanks again and talk to you guys next Friday.